Hello everyone, David here. Now I'm the guitarist in a band, we're called I'm the Manic Whale, you should totally check us out. Um, and I've been wondering if I can dust off some old piano skills I had from years and years ago to see if I can apply them to playing a keyboard based instrument now. Now this is not a keyboard, it's a guitar. Um, you may have noticed that already. It's the Korg RK100 S2, it's quite recently been released. And it's a lot of fun to play, and it certainly makes a statement when you walk onto stage wearing one. Um, so let's have a deep dive into this, give it a review, and see if I can actually play it along the way. Let's go. Okay, so let's take a quick tour of the guitar. Um, it's a three octave keyboard, uh, C to C, um, and it has 200 preset sounds built into it. No speaker, so you do need to take the jack out and plug that into something or um, connect it via USB or through MIDI. You can jump to uh, some of your favorites among the 200 sounds by using these quick access keys and you can reprogram them to jump to specific presets if you particularly like the sound or find one you like. Um, over here it's got a button which changes what the ribbons do, a bit more on that later, and a shift button so that you can change the behavior of some of the other buttons. So there's quite a few different shortcuts. So if you press shift and then E, that will actually let you change the transposition. So you really need the manual to go into all of those. Um, there's an arpeggio button, um, so you can hold down a chord and it will actually play a repeating arpeggio. Over here by your left hand, um, you've got octave up and down buttons. And you can take a note uh, three octaves up or three octaves down. So that actually gives you a pretty decent range with this guitar. Uh, you have a short ribbon and two hold buttons and then the long ribbon here. So the ribbons are very cool. Um, if you play a note with the right hand, you can then modulate it using your left hand on the short ribbon. And it's basically just like a kind of modulation wheel on a typical keyboard. Um, but the really cool thing comes in uh, when you play something with your right hand and then press one of the two hold buttons with your left hand, that frees up your right hand because the sound continues playing for you. Um, and then you can use your right hand on the long ribbon. And you've got three octaves of pitch control on that first preset. Or if you use the other one, the filter hold button, you can then affect the filter effect. And it's typically a different kind of modulation sound to the one on the short ribbon. If you don't want to use the long ribbon, you can actually press this short ribbon button. And this now puts um, something like the pitch bend effect onto the short ribbon instead. Um, so you can do it that way. Each of the presets have different settings for what the short ribbon and the long ribbon does. And I particularly like the modulation on sound effect 8 on the long ribbon. Um, and you can of course use both buttons simultaneously if you want. You can also use the long ribbon without the hold buttons. And that typically just plays a note, um, but it is quite difficult to really accurately play using just the long ribbon because you don't have the comfort of a key to press. So down at the bottom end of the guitar, we've got lots of interesting ports and switches. We've got a USB socket, um, and that's for plugging into a computer. So um, you can download Korg's driver and then simulate a kind of MIDI device, um, but using USB instead, which is pretty cool. Um, you've got the AC adapter plug. It's an optional accessory, so I've got it powered through six AA batteries, rechargeable at the moment, um, but you can buy the AC adapter if you want to plug it into the mains. Um, it has a power switch. It's a soft switch. There's no clicking. Uh, you hold it down quickly to turn it on and then hold it down for a long time to turn it off. And then it has a switch for controlling the input gain for this 3.5 millimeter input jack. It's mono, but it lets you plug in some kind of other audio device, whether it's, you know, some music player or a microphone so that you can put it through the vocoder because it has a few preset sounds which will do that. And then it's got a MIDI out port um, for connecting to an audio interface or any MIDI compatible device. In terms of accessories, you don't get a whole lot really. Um, you get this strap which attaches to the guitar um, and it's fine, it's adjustable, pretty comfortable. The guitar is not that heavy, so you know you don't really need a sort of very cushioned strap. It's a basic one, it does the job. Um, and you also get this soft carry case which comes with it, and it even has a space 
for the AC adapter, I think. Um, but sadly, that doesn't come with it. You have to fork out the extra 17 or 18 pounds for that yourself. Um, so yeah, I would have liked that to come with it. Um, but apart from that, you know, you've sort of got everything else you need. Oh, except a MIDI cable. You will need to pick up on those if you want to connect it to your computer or at least a USB cable to do it that way. I know it's only a minor thing, but I do love that they've got this groove um, in the base of the key tie. It just means that it kind of sits um, on your leg quite nicely when you're sitting down. So it's quite comfortable to play it in this position. So in terms of the built-in sounds, they start off very harsh. And they kind of mellow out a bit as you go further on. But that's because the first 26 presets are all hard synths, according to the manual. Um, but uh, they are a little bit mellower in places. Um, and it's only by the time you get to preset 26 that they're only leads. So from about 60 on, we've got synth brass. And then from 69, nice, onwards, we've got bass. Not all of the sounds are polyphonic, um, and in fact you can get a nice sort of simulated slide sound by only getting the attack from the first note. Ninety-eight onward is strings and pad. effect 100. I think that might be going in my favourites. I think this might be suitable for a radio drama. Yeah, so the sounds definitely mellow out. Um, if you want some really experimental stuff, you have to go even deeper into the presets. So this is now soft synth. From 124 onwards, you have your bell and decay noises. From 143 onwards, you have your more conventional keyboard sounds. And then any of the later presets you can't get to as easily with the shortcut buttons. You have to use this up and down switch, unless you actually reprogrammed some of these and set them to the later presets. Um, but there is some interesting stuff later on. So if we go to um, 159, um, that's the start of the arpeggio and sequencer sounds. It sounds like something out of Katamari Damacy. So from sound effect 171, you have motion. This is called CPU talk. Hundred seventy six onward, you have hit and drum sounds. Okay, hundred eighty six are the SE sounds in the manual, presumably sound effect. Random is traffic. Last boss. WBLBA. <laughs> Eight bit game. And jungle. Oh, nice. 192 is start of Simple Wave. And then you have the vocoder sounds. Okay, it's later now because I had to find a way of connecting my microphone to the guitar. There are probably a few ways to do it, but my way is XLR cable on one end, um, attached to my SM58, and mono 3.5mm jack on the other side. And that seems to be compatible with the guitar's input. And I've got it on gain setting 
mic two, so I think that's a bit more gain. <laughs> So enough messing around with preset sounds, let's actually make a demo song and then you can decide for yourself if you like the sound of the guitar or not. I'll use some of the preset sounds that are built into the instrument and I'll use some VST instruments that I can get working in Studio One as well. Um, so let's put together a short instrumental and I'm going to call it Lock and Key. Let's go. So what did you think of all that? I'd quite like to hear your feedback about the demo song and about the guitar in the comments section below. For me, this is a very fun, if somewhat impractical instrument. If you just want to add keyboard sounds to your music, you're probably better off getting a standard upright keyboard um, and then you don't have this great big handle sticking out the side. If you buy this, you kind of really want a guitar, I think, and it's not cheap at about 750 plus pounds. Um, so make sure this is what you're going for, which to put it bluntly is that kind of retro 80s nostalgia. Um, if you walk out on stage wearing a guitar, you'd better have something good to play because everyone's suddenly going to be looking at you. I do love the long ribbon and that's actually a bit of a killer feature. It allows you to be quite expressive and you can get quite minute adjustments if you really want to adjust some kind of pitch bend or modulation with it. So in that sense, it's really useful. And I'm definitely gonna be using it in the future. I, kind of, I love the way it looks um, and I'm just really happy to have it and to be able to play it. So whether it fits into your life or not is up to you. Okay, that's it from me for today. Um, I hope this video was useful. If so, leave me a like down below and you can help me out by subscribing to my channel as well. Okay, see you next time.